Welcome back to Can We Play Already, where we're finishing up episode four of the Heroes of Valtos Crossing. Um, we have just taken a little bit of a rest in Valtos Crossing, the trade hub, and we are ready to set out on an adventure. Um, given a few tough choices to make, it sounds like the group has settled on traveling to Great Ashar, homeland of the orcs and their uh, divination magic. Uh, it's located south through the Olaran Badlands, which are twisted uh, magical hills of uh, that where once great cataclysm has hit. They're quite barren. Um, you can feel <coughs> the magical energy radiate through them. There are passageways through it. Um, I don't know if you've seen Badlands, but they've got this like layered effect of the rock being like swept away and kind of yeah, very twisty and windy and hilly and, and bizarre and otherworldly. Um, the rock like revealed is, is in hues of deep purples and different reds and clay colors as well. So it's a very interesting place to travel through. Um, I'm guessing we should keep up to our travel rules. Uh, so you all start off, however you start off with your different uh, conditions there. Um, we're leaving at noon. Um, so yeah, you all managed to, I'll, I'll include like your breakfast meals and taking care of food and thirst stuff and part of your long rest or whatever. So you all gain a level of fatigue mm -hmm. as, uh, as you set out. So we started with tired and now we're yeah. sleepy. Yeah. Okay. Now you're sleepy. <laughs> Already it gets <laughs> we, fun. We immediately leave and it's like, I'm sleepy. Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn around right now. I'm too tired. Um, you travel through the afternoon uh, and through the Badlands without much uh, trouble. Um, you manage to make camp that night. Um, you can all eat if you want or you can wait. Um, and when you camp, uh, there's no concern or anything. You recover two levels of fatigue. I know it's just back and forth here, but that's how it goes. Just yeah, like real life. I'm going to drink and eat. Yeah, I will also do that. Um, <clears throat> oh, so we, do, do we refill our rations, I'm assuming? Yeah, your I, rations are all full from your long rest. Do you expend a ration for uh, Alda? No. no. I'm going to say you manage to provide. Or the environment around it does. So the ration, the drinking, bumps us up at two again? Yeah, it does, you're right. Yeah. But we fall down from the traveling, or...? Um, oh my gosh, is it... Uh... Yeah, so it'll only be upping you by one, because you'll lose one of each at night, too. Okay. okay. Gotta remember how these things work. Um, so we get to the next AM. Um, at dawn, you break up your camp. You take another fatigue and hunger because it's morning. Do we have fatigue? Or, did or sorry, uh, another and thirst hunger? and hunger. Okay. Um, it's always food and water at the beginning. And uh, as you head out in the morning, um, the wind starts to pick up. Uh, the magical energy of the Badlands kind of uh, has a that kind of like pre-thunderstorm crackle to it in the air, that tension. Um, and you start to see like dust ahead of you pick up and sand ahead of you pick up. Um, you know this region is pretty intense for its uh, storms and such. Um, however, this one seems a little isolated and like it's heading right for you. Um, what you see is just a whirlwind of sand and air. Uh, I don't know, it's probably about like 15 feet tall, um, and it's whirling through the Badlands uh, towards you. Uh, you know you have to pass through a section, like it, it's cutting right across the path, essentially. It's going to cost you extra time to go through it. Um, what do you do? So our only choice is to go through it. Yeah. <coughs> right? um, or like we You could, could cut around. some extra time and add some time to the journey to go around it. Oh, OK. Um, the, the yeah. only thing that going through it costs us is time, though, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's like kind of the same difference, right? Or... So it's time to go through Well, going it through it would be faster. Oh, it would even be a if little you bit faster. Even if you stopped to investigate and stuff like that. Um, Push through. Yeah, sure. 
All right. As you as you go to push through, um, you notice some uh, other travelers on the road as well. Um, they're a little off the beaten path, but you pick up on them uh, to the east of where this place is, and they seem to have uh, to be watching you intently to see what you do. Um, they're robed completely head to toe um, in different wraps and cloths and stuff like that, um, and you just manage to see them like resting by a, a nearby tree. Um, as they watch what you do. Um, okay, and like we can clearly see them, or they, 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 yeah. they look like they're hiding? or They not? look like they're trying to stay out of sight. Okay. <clears throat> um, well, well, Tide's going to like wave at them. Friendly hey, wave. what's up? <laughs> Friendly wave. You see them like duck behind cover a bit more as if they've like been spotted. Oh, oh okay. And they don't like being spotted. I guess they don't want to they don't want to chat. Um, Oi, what are you looking at? <laughs> hey, I can see you. As you uh, <laughs> try and communicate with them, this whirlwind of sand uh, starts to come closer to you. And as you can, as you get closer to it, it kind of senses your presence. And you can tell you're dealing with like an air elemental spirit. <gasps> um, as it kind of like has a mind of its own and seeks, is starting to seek you out now. Mm. Oh. Hello. Well, Tad just speaks to the... I, I just <laughs> point at it, and I'm like, Is this you? Are you doing this? <laughs> um, you don't get the sense that they are powerful enough to control an air elemental, but they might be watching to see what happens to you. Are air elementals, like, innately hostile, or...? Um, yes. Okay. Very much so. That is important information. Oh, would, would Wild Tide know that air elementals are innately hostile? Yeah, generally elementals in the wild are... Are innately hostile. Okay. Do I have any sort of like affinity or like connection with them or anything? For being a bird? Because like, I mean, Eric Coker, well, Eric Coker are like from the air elemental plane, right? Oh, true. Yeah, um, you understand they're like chaotic manifestations of the elements. Um, the elementals aren't like in, in a, another religion what angels might be or anything. They're more like byproducts of the magical nature of this area itself. And sometimes it expresses itself in very chaotic ways. Um, elementals are generally destructive by nature, um, just as the elements embody chaos itself usually, mm -hmm. and so do the elemental planes. And they're kind of things that leak from the elemental planes into our material one. Mm -hmm. So often they're kind of ununderstandable and unintelligible and just like to wreck things up a bit and responsible for a lot of uh, the reason that some of these wild lands aren't populated very well. Hmm. Um, the two onlookers look to be seeing what's happening or what's going to happen and might be looking to take advantage of people who are waylaid by this elemental. Oh. Maybe we should walk away from the air element. <laughs> well, Tide would like all elementals though right or maybe just specifically water elementals like being um, a druid even if you like are in touch with the with nature you do recognize that they are like you stay away from the path like, yeah exactly okay. and they're not necessarily like good like they're not necessarily at home here okay um i mean you might even think of destroying elementals as like being able to release them back to their their energy back to their home plane Okay. And helping out. It would be definitely more helpful to destroy them from hitting other travelers and stuff. Or find the other people who are less easy, what, like less able to defend themselves. Hmm. And our friends are hiding behind like a tree? Yeah, like... there's a there's a few trees uh, over the over a hill to the east. And as you walk down the path, it's kind of like between a couple hills winding, like on this um, like on the in a little bit of a valley. Mm -hmm. And they're up on a hill in the east uh, about I don't know, I'm going to say like 100 yards away or 100 feet away from you, uh, hiding behind like a very scraggly tree mm -hmm. and behind the, the hill itself. Um, and yeah, the air elemental is like about, I don't know, 60 feet ahead of you on the path. Okay, so it's not that far. Like <laughs> no, but like it's, it's far enough that you could try and like get away from here or outrun or something like that. But it does present an interesting problem. What do you want to deal with first, these people in hiding or this air elemental and just try and tough it out? Hmm. hmm. We could be in a bad spot if the um, if like this thing hurts us though. Mm -hmm. Like if it hurts us, and then these people take advantage. Yeah, they might take advantage of us. That's why they're they're um, behind the tree. Maybe yeah, we, they we, look shady. Look maybe. at those shady fools. <laughs> 
It's Maybe we can go talk shade to from them. the tree. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try and approach them and get to them before the air elemental gets to you, or? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, you. May, do you want to try and like? You can probably outpace them because you have a flying speed of fifty feet. Yeah. So I'm going to say you're the one that's guaranteed to be able to to get at them. So as you guys head up the hill, um, you manage to fly ahead and land on the other side as they try and run away from you. Oh, they're running. Cowards. All right. Yeah, I'm going to stop and just be all like, boom, land with a dramatic thing and big wingspan and like halt. And <laughs> I don't know. What, no, are, what are they like? What do I? See? That's very fair. Um, one of them has a, a hand crossbow, and one of them has a sword out. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can barely see anything of their of their physical features. They are completely wrapped head to toe in different like scarves and and clothing hmm. to protect themselves. Hmm. Um, and all that's really visible is their eyes. Do I recognize the eyes as anything? Is one of them your mom? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> They're not cats, so no. Um, you have a feeling they might be moon folk, which <gasps> are uh, vampires, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, although they don't turn people into vampires, they do exist uh, by subsiding themselves on others' blood. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So yeah, they're they're quite they're tall. They're they're not very like they're I don't know more on the thin side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. you get the feeling that that's what, what you're facing here. Dang! All right, do Are they you, do anything? Like right now, they just like you land in front of them with a swoosh, and they like have their weapons out and they stop as you like block their path, and you guys are coming out from behind. All right, I'm probably the next uh, fastest. Yeah, you're probably gonna get there first. Is there anything you want to do or say? Um, how you... do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Hello, children. <laughs> they see the rest of you coming up the hill as well. Um, and one of them uh, very, I don't know, aggressively kind of shouts out, if you fight us here, uh, the elemental will be upon all of us. We don't want to fight. Mm-hmm. All tied, like, shouts. Yeah, We're we, friends. We're friendly. We come in peace. Yeah. Um... Well, I don't know. They're out hunting. Like, they're out looking for a score, essentially. They don't seem to be up to any, any good at all. And these, these creatures are like a known quantity, too. Like, everyone oh, yeah. knows that they're like, oh, You've yeah. You've heard rumors. They're kind of used as like bedtime stories, too, to like scare children and stuff. Um, you know, travelers beware of, of these kind of people. They're like, not all of them are obviously evil in any way. Um, but yeah, these two look like they're out in the desert and they need sustenance. Uh, and a lot of the time they, like, mm-hmm. travelers are easy prey. Do we know, like, how much sustenance like, they need? Like, if I donated blood, would they be? <laughs> well oh my god, oh my god, well tied. Well tied is <laughs> like... <laughs> well tied is eternally so good. Um... Do you do you offer? Are you like? Well, yeah, I like inquire. Well, if I know they're moon folk, I guess. Yeah. Like, do do I know? It's like if you help us beat the the wind elemental, maybe help release it. Uh, we can maybe help you out a bit. Well, you can't don't, eat don't me can't. entirely, but you just like I'm, take a little bit if you're starving or something. I am not on board with this. Yeah, don't tell them that. They're, you can't trust them. <laughs> well, there's, there's the three of you, so like they're you know I'll be protected if. Uh, so what I'm hearing is you guys don't want to have to fight the elemental and we don't want to have to fight you. Uh, so I think we're in a bit of a stalemate here. Um, yeah, they kind of look at each other and one of them's like, oh, I knew this was foolish to wait for people here. It's too dangerous. And like, it's like, look, the elemental's like headed towards us right now. And um, as you are talking, like this elemental does seem to be climbing up this hill and like... Dust is picking up and the wind is picking up around you. Either you two are helping us out or you're getting out of here. You can help us. If you help us, uh, I can give you just like a little bit to help get you by. Oh my God, move. I'm I'm like (laughs) ushering people at this point. Like walk walk and jock. Okay. So, are we, okay. We're like yeah. moving in. Okay. Um, uh, I want to stay like spread out. I don't think we should be huddled up while dealing with the elemental too. Like, also, are they? Do they seem convinced by my proposition? Yeah, they like they look at each other for a second. Um, 
I guess they make like a charisma. Per, or you're you're going on like empathy here a bit too, and like yeah, got wisdom. Okay, wisdom persuasion. Okay, do a weird roll. Do you have persuasion? Uh, I don't have persuasion, but okay. I've got good wisdom. So, all right, let's. Okay, fourteen. It's not bad. Yeah, it manages to get them for the situation. It is a dire situation. They do know they're in trouble. And they're like, fine. And they're like, one of them's like, I don't think it's like we have enough time to run it at this point, though. Okay, well, we can we can stand ground and help release it back into the, the, the plane of elemental wind. Yeah, like, and, and you can tell, like, one of them is, like, looking at the other, like, this is your fault. This is, like, a stupid idea. And they're they're the one that kind of takes charge and it's like, fine, if you if you help us and like we we destroy this thing together, we will leave you be. Okay. And we'll continue on our way. Um and yeah, we'll roll initiative and see how mm-hmm. this goes. Uh, I rolled a <laughs> two. <laughs> And my so intelligence is zero, so That's I'm fine. two. I love how it's like two, two, what? Like, yeah. I was half <laughs> expecting like you to get a three, so like one, two, three. <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> it's bad Who got the highest? 17. Me, <laughs> I guess. Next to all the twos, I rolled a natural one. Same. <gasps> yeah. Wait, well, who's that? Was that for the vampires? Or for the air elemental? <laughs> yeah. um, I'll roll one for the, uh, for the moon folk. No, I rolled a three. Oh, there we go. That's so uh, I'm saying. getting all the bad rolls out right now. Um, Andrew. <laughs> well tied. And the moon folk. Um, yeah, they're just going to do like a straight amount of damage each turn and try and stay out of the way. Mm-hmm. And they might be targeted or something like that, but we'll see. Um, so Kanaima, you're at first. Um, you're on a bit of a hilltop. There's some like rocks and a few like scraggly trees around as like slight cover, but this is also like a 15 foot tall whirlwind that's coming up that you're, it's, it's hard to deal with. Um, it looks a little intangible, but I'm gonna say as, you, as you, like people, as someone who's been in the desert for a while, you probably know that like swords and blades are not the best thing to work on it, but it, it's not gonna do nothing. Okay. Could do something. <laughs> what do you wanna do? All right, well I got these. Two swords, so <laughs> I'm running in. For sure. Uh, <laughs> Swinging at the air. You know what? I'm doing like a, like a whirling Ooh. thing. Nice. Yeah, I'm whirling kind of the opposite thing. direction that it's spinning in. <laughs> <laughs> try, and, try and slow it down with your own I'm force. Gonna, I'm trying to, yeah. Yeah. Like right. Undo it. Yeah, so, like Superman, like going the opposite way around the world to turn mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. that Oh, kind of yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's like about 30 feet away from you guys right now, so. so All right. Get in there. Um, go ahead and roll some attack rolls. Okay. Um, so this is going to be like 10. Seconds. So main hand. Main is 14 plus 5. Nine, You're going to hit with that one. Uh, and we're still at 3d6, right, with the sneak attack? Or 2d6 for sneak attack? Uh, yeah, 2, yeah. Sweet. Two. And plus the d6 for your scimitar. Plus 15. 15? Yeah. Perfect. And then the off hand is 11 plus 5, 16. Uh, that hits as well. So just 1d6. 5 extra damage. Yeah. All right, yeah, you manage to whirl through it and slash at it with your two blades. You're left pretty close to it um, with the dust kind of kicking up and like making it really hard to hold on to your stance there. But yeah, uh, you managed to do something for it. Sick. Um, do you want to do anything else right now? Uh, or I guess it's your action bonus action? Yeah, that was my action and bonus action. All right, then who do you want to go next? Um, hmm. Does anybody have anything? I'm considering do doing, but oh yeah, do you want to do yours? Was, what were you thinking? I was gonna bless, every, um, yeah, possibly like every, uh, if you're if you're at a range for Kanaima, then like yeah, the the ranged people. Okay. Um, um, sure. But yeah. what, what was your thing though? Oh, I was just going to impress our uh, moonfolk friends by using a moonbeam. 
<laughs> Great. Um, should I do I do bless first and then you do moonbeam? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so um, so Andrew's gonna get behind cover as much as that's possible. Um, yeah. And then we'll cast bless on um, yeah the the three casters essentially. Um, uh, so it's a one d four to attack and saving throws for the next minute. So nice. Sweet. Um, yeah, being proactive. And she's asking Sekra to help us out to kick the butt of this weird wind monster. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, oh, and then I get to roll to see my burnout. Is that just uh, physical attacks? Um, no, I think no, it's all attacks. attacks. Yeah, yeah. Spells and yep. Too, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, anything with an attack roll. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right. Uh, and so now... now well, you want to cut it with a moonbeam? Yeah. yeah. So uh, moonbeam will go into its base, so it'll have to make a constitution saving throw 13 okay uh what's your wisdom plus it, three it's uh 14 to save oh, so, so yeah. i missed it by one yeah all right oh, wait um, this is uh this is an attack can you do you use your the extra no d4? it's just a save this one's throw. just the yeah because it's a safe uh so actually sorry d10. can instead of blessing myself can i bless kanaima is kanaima oh, within 30 feet yeah for okay sure. cool yeah just okay. within range yeah yeah so it's going to take 2d10 radiant damage. Okay. And uh, when it starts its turn there, it's also going to do the same thing again. Brutal. So do the I'll con to... save and everything? Yeah. So nine. nine. And, and nine. nine. So 18. Yep. Wow. Um, and the idea here is like it's kind of in a, like the path to us, so it's gonna have to like pass through it to get to us. I'm trying to like also discourage the wind elemental okay. and impress our. But it is like on its space, right? Yeah, it's on its space. So, so it's in broad daylight, this moonlight beam of energy yeah. goes down. It's a bit of a, it's like an eclipse. It's beautiful. Ooh. I really wow. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna spend one of my little tokens this battle to mm-hmm. cut in, mm-hmm. I think, and then take my turn. Um, it's gonna. Do take another con save. Oh yeah, sorry. I was gonna take another con save because it's starting here. Uh, this one I did pass. I got uh, twenty. So this time is it uh, half damage? Half damage. So five. I rolled a six and a four. Um, and it's going to. Uh, hmm. I think it's just going to do its uh, slam attack against Kanaima. Um, mm-hmm. So it's whirling things around and it just whips up a huge chunk of rock and mm-hmm. tries to aim it at you, as a whirlwind does. It's going to be uh, 20 to hit. Jesus. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's going to deal 14 damage, bludgeoning. Okay. Oof. Eesh. Yeah, oof, oof, oof. you'll probably kill this thing pretty easily, but it's going to wear you down and do a few res- get a few resources while it does. Um, and then it's going to fly up to uh, the hilltop. Sorry, oh, I thought you were pointing. Um, it's going to fly up to the hilltop away from you, um, up to where everyone else is, and kind of get. It's like it's quite large, so it's kind of like on top of all the rest of you and in your space. Does it pass by me? Um, you will get an opportunity attack. Yeah. Sick. Okay. Let me check to see moonbeam. Add a, add a d4 oh. to whatever that is. Too. Ooh, it's also trying to get yeah. out of the freaking moonbeam. Yeah. I think you might be able to move it, though. That's yeah. what I'm trying to find out now, yeah. Freaking bonus moonbeam. action thing. So it's a 13? 13 to hit? Yeah. Um, it's not going to cut it. Okay. Um, so it gets out without any problems. Um, anyways, uh, up next. Ooh, that's interesting. Shape changers make their saving throws with disadvantage. Oh, yeah. It's really good against like lichen and, and stuff. Fails, it like instantly reverts. That's kind of weird. Tangle, you're up. What size is it? It's large. Ooh. Okay. How Why? Many, how many feet Reasons. did it move? Uh, it moved 30. Okay, yeah. You're good? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to fly up into this guy, uh, 50 feet high, as high as I can go in one turn. Okay. Uh, and then just start raining down some uh, fire bolts on it. Um, it does get an opportunity attack on you if you run out of its range. Fucking bring it. 
Do you want 14 damage? Wait, it's gonna miss me. Did we take damage? Just no one else no. did. No, it just moved back to you. I'm gonna get a. Yeah, it's gonna be a 20. Oh. How's it a 20? It's a really good attack. This is like a high CR creature. It's All right, like, oh, I guess it hits me. 14 damage. What? It's 14 again? You it's don't roll it? Bludgeoning. No, I just I, I do strict damage. I, damn it. That is my choice as a DM. God damn. It, it could be higher, and it's not. 14 is the average. I see, I see. Just, what do you want to do? Firebolt this fucking thing. God yeah, for it. sure. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, I didn't roll burnout. Yeah, so I'm going to oh, get yeah. uh, 18 to hit. Okay, you're going to hit. And I'm going to deal three damage. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's some damage. It's it's a non-zero. Um, do you want to roll your burnout for your last one? We forgot yeah. to do that. Nothing? And yeah, your good. burnout? All right, we're all good. Um, last up are going to be the moon folk. Um, they're on your side. They're just going to deal uh, some damage to it, hopefully, with their crossbows from a bit of a range. And yeah, they're going to deal uh, five piercing damage to it. Um, it's not much. Both attacks hit. They deal like five each, kind of, but it's, it's half effective. At a quick glance, how effective are the crossbows against this creature? Not great, okay, just cool. like the blades are, yeah. but you guys have dished out a lot of damage so far, mm-hmm. so you are like, it is looking a little less powerful and the wind is less strong than when it started. Mm-hmm. You're cool. starting to definitely have an effect on it. Mm-hmm. Um, the Moonfolk are in your domain as an ally. Mm-hmm. Who do you want to go next? Is, it, is the thing occupying the same space as us right yes. now? Okay, and if I move that is out how of the it same works. space, does it attack? If you move um, more than five feet away from it. Okay, so I... But you can stay, like, out just outside its space, technically, I guess, as so far as like, opportunity attacks work. Like, I could move the moonbeam into the space. Oh, and, and you yeah. don't want to hit yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The moonbeam's just, like, five feet, right? Okay. So I'll go after, like, other people also mm-hmm. move out of... Yeah, okay. Um, moonbeam is Okay, well. so you want to save yourself for a little bit? Who has a plan right now? I mean, my plan is to just hit it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's also my plan. <laughs> yeah, more fireballs. Yeah. And I guess you'll also step out. Of the yeah, yes. Okay, cool. yeah. I'm right. mad as hell. It just hit me. Yeah. Well, let's get people out of it for the moonbeam then. Probably yeah, like yeah. you or the next. Yeah. One. Okay. So I'll, so I'll move out and then I want to um, sacred flame. So it has to do a deck saving throw. Okay. Are you gonna try and get some distance on it and risk the opportunity attack, or do you just no. want to stay within five feet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take move however much I have to do to get out of the moonbeam. And you said wisdom. Um. It's a uh, it's a deck save. Oh, deck save. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sacred flame. Uh, I got a eleven. Um, 11 does not do it. I bet not. Um, so yeah, I'm going to roll a d8. It's five damage into my burnout. Uh, I do Ooh, burn out. No. But it's a cantrip, right? Yeah, it's a cantrip. So your die goes down, but no risk. Okay, cool. Um, and Sacred Flame means uh, attacks have advantage on it, or next attack has yes, advantage? Yes, next, next attack has advantage. Okay. Um, so wait, I you... think so. Let me, let me double check that quickly. Uh, who do you want to go next in the meantime? Um, Only just, well tides in the in the side of the elemental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, let's go tangle. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw another firebolt at it. Okay. And do more damage this time. Hiya. Um, sorry, I'm just quickly checking to see if you yeah. have advantage on this one. Don't worry. Damn or I think it might be the other uh, whatever it is. Um, Sacred flame. Um, I have it on here. Oh, Sacred Flame covers is beyond cover. That's what it is. You're yeah, right. that's a, yeah, that's what right, I thought. All right, so... Uh, yeah, uh, 21 to hit, and I uh, yeah. deal three damage again. But you do go down a burn and die. Indeed I do. Damn. All right, you're still chunking away at it. Um, so Tangle and Andre have gone. Um, I'd like to go to... Yeah? To get out of its... Wind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll pick Well Tide unless it gets to do its thing because of the damage. I'm gonna use one of them. They want to use Inspiration to block it. I'm gonna try and go before Well Tide gets out of it. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm I don't have ins- I don't have Inspiration. Um, it's just gonna be uh, it's going to do a it's whirlwind attack. 
um, which is a strength save for you as its wings pick up and it tries to literally like throw you out of its own body. Good thing I am blessed. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, so strength save and you need to hit 13 to pass. 13 to pass, okay. Uh... <laughs> which lucky die will it be? Oh yeah, color combo. Uh, what do I need to pass? 13. Oops, I do not make it. Um, all right, it's going to be 15 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, you are whipped out of this uh, Rowan space 20 feet and fall prone uh, lying down where you land. But 15 bludgeoning is all you're taking. And where do I land, or do um, you land just like twenty feet away from it, like a little okay. bit south, um, like opposite of where Andre stepped out? I'd say. Do I have to make a concentration? Um, save? Oh, it's a concentration spell. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna make. Uh, let's see. It'll be ten, or the damage. So you have to be fifteen, with a con save. Okay. Mm. I didn't even realize that. Mm. Good thing I'm blessed. Oh, well. Wow. Wow. <laughs> All right. So you hold on to the spell and uh And then I'll go. I'll take that. I'll allow it. Turn. Everyone has to. Um and I know it's coming eventually. And yeah, uh Moonbeam is gonna go uh, am I in the same direction as my friends, or am I, like, away from them? You've been split up a bit. Tangle's, like, up in the air. Kanaima's down the hill a bit from where uh, he was before. Andri's, like, where the still, like, next to it in melee range. Mm -hmm. okay. And you've just been, like, sprawl on the ground. So I'm going to, like, put it on top of it, but, like, kind of, like, a little bit more in between it and Andri to, like, discourage it from going yeah, forward. Yeah, okay. I see. Um, con save, you said? No. Uh, yeah, con yeah. save. Uh, I got 17. So half, half damage. damage. It's a good spell. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. That's uh, six then. Right? Yeah. Six. All right, you're chunking it down. Um, next up is Kanaima. Yeah. I'm going to run up to it and just like, it. try <laughs> and <laughs> slash it with the same guys again. Stop! Oh. <laughs> I'll also get up from the ground because that's not a problem. Oh yeah, of <laughs> course. You can use half your speed to do that. Um, so yeah, you're still getting your sneak attack because you're fighting it with Andri. Yeah. And well, I mean, I get it. Anyways. You would get it if you were, if you were alone too. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah. So... You get an extra sneak attack? <laughs> <laughs> the sneakiest attack. Okay, so that's, that's 15 plus 5. That's 20. That's going to hit? Yeah. Um, it's not a, It's not ironclad. <laughs> I mean, I'm shocked you're doing so much damage with swords to an air elemental. Like, right? you're still doing pretty good. Can I oh still, uh, still carrying yeah. the damage? Nine this is, this is very on brand for Kanaima. Another three. Yeah. So, 12? 12? Yeah. And then I am. One more, or do you want to get out of there? Have to, or yeah, I yeah. have it. I'm going to do a second. Attack. You're right in on this thing. You're like, no running away from nah, this. No running away. That's a two. <laughs> All right, so the second one does not hit, unfortunately. But I'm still going to piece out of there with my feline agility. Oh, yeah, and get out. Okay, yeah. perfect. So you run 30 feet away from it? Yes. All right. <laughs> Who do you want to go first in the next round? Um, oh, have the... the, the, the Moon. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, they did one of them hit for two damage. Cool, cool, cool. Actually, cool, I cool. got these. I'm going to use another one of these and take the air elemental first for the round. Another safe. <laughs> yeah, fail that. I did fail. Okay, so you take six this time as well. <laughs> All right, and it's going to try and make an attack against Andre this yeah, time. Do it. I mean, like, don't do it. Um, no, it's not going to hit that. <laughs> so you are very lucky. Uh, it whips up a bunch of rocks at you and just like tries to get at you, but you just like shield them off with your armor. Wow, and... that, don't shit stand at me. The sand's getting everywhere. <laughs> it's awful. It's real bad. Um, do you want to go next? Uh, sure, yeah, I'll go next. Um, I'll pick you because I just attacked you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just doing Sacred Flame on it. Yeah, like, for sure. Uh, um, so yeah, dex save. Um, and we're looking at passing that. Uh, yeah. With an 18. Yeah, it does. Um, it's very good dex, too. Yeah, so I'm going to 
move five feet, then that's it. <laughs> just like stay away, stay on the edge of it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Stay in melee range. Yeah. Who do you want to go next? Um, yeah, Kanaima seems to be doing yeah. well, so I want to keep that going. And I guess roll a d10 for burnout. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, yes. Wait, that's not. I'm not used to doing d10s. I know, right? It's actually the first time. No, it's not the first time it's got knocked down. It's good. We're good. Yeah. Yes. All right, Kanaima. Mm -hmm. All right. Jumping at it. Do you have ranged weapons at all? Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a choice. <laughs> yeah. It's a choice that I've made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so interested to know what we'll do if something flies or something like that. Oh, use your D4 Nothing. too. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was, uh, I was just checking to see what it was before. <laughs> You're definitely going to hit it. Yeah, okay. Um, and then some more, some more sneak attack. Oh my Whoa. god. What? <laughs> Is that like, oh my god. <laughs> that's 11, 4, 15, plus 3, 18 damage? So that's a solid 9 even at the, with resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Yeah. All right, let's make your second one. Uh, I'm not making oh a God, second attack this time because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna dash out of there because I don't want to get hit by it. Again. Oh, using your bonus action to dash. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you trigger so it doesn't get an opportunity attack on you because you hit it with melee. Yeah. You're lucky you hit. <laughs> you really are because that's like really not great if you don't. Yeah. Who do you want to go? It's not even if I hit it. It's just if I attack it. Oh, just making it. Oh yeah. God, really? Just making that's me amazing. attack. Yeah, swashbuckler. That's it's going to be so like good. a daring daredevil who like, you know, back yeah. and forth in and out of battle. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Tangle or Welltide next? Um, do you have a plan for it? Um, well, I'd just be moving the Moonbeam onto it, and then I can actually make another spell attack against it while I'm moving okay. the Moonbeam too. Are you... Mm, I want to <laughs> <laughs> um, pick... I'm going to say Tangle first. Yeah. All right, make your... Uh, Fireball? First, I fly 50 feet higher. <laughs> so you're 100 feet away? Yeah. No. How are you going to get down? Uh, also flying. <laughs> is Tinkle still here? I don't see him anymore. <laughs> Where is Tinkle? Goodbye, friends. You're in like a tornado. <laughs> so like, yeah, you probably He's didn't. left us. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let's give it a uh, yeah 19 to hit. I'm actually going to do 9 damage this time. No, that's enough. I know, right? And I succeed my burnout. Um, all right. You manage to fell this air elemental and it dissipates into Ooh. nothingness as it burns out. All right. Be one with the elemental plane again, all tied. Mm -hmm. Eat shit! <laughs> we got a Ben laugh. Those are always a treasure. All right. Um, we'll do a short rest at night, if that's okay, and keep going so, through the day. So, our, or do our, now? Our, so yeah, our friends are cool, right? So, um, anything? yeah, I was, I was worried about the mechanics. So many players are like, oh, my God, what about my HP and shit? Mm -hmm. But um, when the air elemental dies down, um, they kind of come to their senses uh, as far as attacking you. And one of them's like, I'm sorry we, we set up this trap for you. Um, you fought well, and you helped save us today. Um, hopefully we helped you as well. And we can leave this place not as enemies. Cool. Yeah, don't do that anymore. Yeah, don't don't attack people if you can manage to not do that. I'm going to say just don't do it to me. <laughs> Put her there! Can, can, you, can you, like, drink animal blood? Does it have to be people? Um... <laughs> it's what the uh, the other one who is kind of like the more brains behind this idea that got them into trouble in the first place. <laughs> are they picky in the brain? Yeah, yeah I know, right? <laughs> um, they are. They kind of uh, get a bit offended by that, and they're like, "You don't know what our life is like, and how hard it is to live along, like live in the desert that uh, as a as a cursed person. Um, we will find our own way. We will survive. But don't judge our customs, mm -hmm. as they like leave you." It's a very, very cold kind of leave. Mm -hmm. No judgment! Not judging, just don't want people getting hurt. I was on the verge of attacking them, so I'm glad. I, I, almost just, I <laughs> mostly I, just don't want me to get hurt. Your it's first like, encounter with these moon folk has not been good. If we had not what do you been, mean? We if we'd been no, I mean, like, so they would have just like jumped them. on us, yeah. Yeah. is what I'm taking. Impressive. So I don't. That doesn't endear them to me very much. Yeah. I don't know if they have moon magic, so to speak, or revere that, but yeah, I, who's used to say? I assume they kept their, uh, like, 
cloaks and hoods and yeah, all for that sure. on the whole time? Okay. Yes. So they will roast. Yes. Okay. It is. Uh, there's a lot of rumors, and it's hard to 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 say what's true and not about them. But you do know that they uh, do not like the sun. Extra crispy. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, you continue your way through the the badlands that night. Um, oh wait, actually, yeah. So do we take a short rest? Is that what you're saying? Are you cool if we do it at night? Mm-hmm. And I'll do the. So you awesome. lose two. Um, sorry, you lose a. Fatigue at noon. Before we do the rest, I want to use my channel divinity, and I want to heal up. Oh, yeah, um, yeah please. Yeah. Before we set yeah, up. Um, yeah, Kanaima, you're the one who got hit the most. Yeah. Today. We both took 14. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We so did Wild Tide. Yeah, I, took yeah I think all of us took Oh, you did too, 14. right? And Wild Tide took 15. Kanaima has the highest max. I, I have the highest, and I have I can just use some hit dice probably. So. Yeah, I mean, I can also... Mm use spells I just for free I get the channel divinity Um, Mm -hmm. um, so I was gonna do that for sure um sorry I'm just looking at much yeah it'd be good to do before you set out Uh, oh yeah so it can't it restores a creature for no more than half of its hit point maximum um but still you've, you've been hit pretty hard right I mean I got like 14 in one go so everybody got hit for 14 so yeah yeah and what's what's your maximum my max is 39 okay cool so just making sure that <laughs> overdo it um, jesus yeah. so we're just like, i rolled a oh. seven when we leveled up oh, oh actually, like, i can divide it among i can divide it among different people actually um yeah so we can go up above half yeah i can't heal you more than half but that's i don't think that's gonna happen with no, it's not that you can't. I can. So it's five times your cleric level and hit points. Yeah. The part that had me confused was um, the restored creature for no more than half of its hit point maximum. Oh. But that's that's about like I can't restore that. It's not that they can't. Yeah. So like if yeah, someone's okay, max what... was 30, you can't give them more than 15. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So you get 20 points in total. Yes. Yeah. So we can divide it up between everyone if that's the case too. If everyone's been hit pretty hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Or I can do it between... Yeah, I guess everyone got hit for 14, right? Yeah, well, I got yeah, one, about, like, yeah. one more. 15 for that for some reason. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, um, that's because of the bludgeoning damage. Do you want to do, like, 776? Seven, well, I'm wondering, I sort of divide it up between two people, and then I'm going to actually cast a spell to heal someone, to hear, right. uh, to heal uh, Welltide, maybe? They're the yeah. two... I think yeah. Welltide and, and Tangle are the two weakest for... Mm. so 10 and 10 would be fair for them or do you want to yeah that makes sense yeah I'll do 10 10 with them and then I'll cast an actual cure light wounds on Kanaima so for Kanaima you're going to get like the real healing Um, or maybe the the low healing Hmm? maybe the low healing too that's Mm -hmm. the dice roll so potentially I add so much stuff to my healing though that it's probably going to be fine. Yeah, it's pretty dependable with you. Yeah. So it's 1d8 usually plus spell yeah, casting. Um, I rolled an 8. Whoa. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, it's 8 plus 2 plus the spell's level, which is 1, plus my level, which is 4. So 6, 7. Yeah, so 15. Okay, so, so I'm yeah, back to full. You're good. And then I'm going to wow. roll my burnout die. Nice. Um, nice. Which is good. All right. Um, I am very appreciative of the healing. Oh, and I'm gonna grab some from my little coin purse, uh, eight silver, and be like, "Oh no, you don't, you don't. That's not what this is. <laughs> that's it's, not what we're doing. Is this not how money works? <laughs> no, look, <laughs> the I, you know that I want us to make money, but like that's don't please don't do that. That's not what this was about. You are my friend. You value this. <laughs> I do value money because I oh, needed to live. So I think you also needed to live more than you realize. You, you just gave me life. That's Aww. that's true. Well, so I mean, that's <laughs> so you can think Sekra. I mean, really, is the one who <laughs> was helping us in that. Sekra is my co-pilot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, she, Sekra take the wheel, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's just she's kind of my my personal favorite but you know she's just one of many spirits that inhabit this world as we all i'm like flipping through my journal of all the constellations and i'm like nope no sekra here <laughs> so many penises just so birds <laughs> yeah. yeah so and many penises <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
yeah, you don't you don't have to. <laughs> well, oh I thank you regardless. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want, like, Sekra, like, she's not the star. She's kind of like, you know, she's like the desert. She's like, you know. I think she's a star. <laughs> she's here right now. She's a, she's a star. She's a, any, is, any, is that her? The, any, <laughs> no, it's like any, anyone that is, like, in, in need. She comes to, like, those who, like, need need help. The, the sort of death. Those who need to, like, persevere. Like, oh, Savara. like Kanaima. Like Silvara. I do. Yeah, actually, Kanaima, you, you might be, you know, you're the sort of person that potentially uh, Sekro would look after. I mean, we all kind of are. I persevere I mean, well, a lot of the time. Yeah, that's what, that's what <laughs> yeah. Sekro's all about. I have an important side question. When Weltai <laughs> got tossed out of that thing, uh, what happened to Alda? Um, some slight bruising. Slight bruising. Yeah, you have to <gasps> care for them. No. Okay, I'm going to... I refuse to treat them like a mechanical thing. That's mm-hmm. totally fine. I'm just well, gonna well, make is still them going cosmetic. To, yeah, that's that's my intention too. Um, <laughs> this thing is never gonna fight. Walti's just gonna take care of it. But I'm gonna spend a spell slot to make some good berries so that I can help heal mm-hmm. it, and give it a good berry. Oh yeah, from a mechanical perspective, I'm gonna spend hit dice to put my burnout up one. All right. Well, yeah. Okay. So that. let's. Um, yeah. So at noon you gain uh, fatigue, mm-hmm. and then at night you gain all three. Okay. Um, uh, I have some good berries, so we can all eat good berries to. Oh, lovely! Wait, why do so we, that why do we get all three at no- Oh, but when we sleep, yeah. that takes it away, right? Yeah, kind of. It's like yeah, so you you'll... gain you gain a hunger and a thirst in the morning. You gain a fatigue at noon. You gain all three at night because mm-hmm. you spent a day traveling. Okay, and then I you see. spend uh, time to to. Okay, and then now we're now we're sleeping, so it all goes up. Okay. Yeah. And did you say well, you're casting good berry? And... Yeah, so we can all have a good... like. A, okay. So the hunger is... Yeah, the good berry them, so. gives you... It's like a ration. Is it water as well or just food? Just, just food. food. I can okay. I can cast create water if we need it, but for the moment I think we're all... Yeah, I know right? you're all yeah, okay. Yeah, we all have full Basically you go down by two on everything every day, and then yeah. it goes back up if you use a ration and a water... A ration and a water skin thing and you sleep. Okay, I'm going to use, yeah, water and a ration just to keep my stuff nice and... Uh, oh, you don't need mm-hmm. to use a ration. Okay, or we don't use a, a ration. water, a sip of water, yeah. a good berry, and I'm resting, so yeah, I'm going to be Yeah, there's nothing disturbing you this night. Positive. Does good berry upper, upper hunger more than usual? No, it's reason? just like okay. a ration. For I think you get um, one HP. Gets one HP as yeah. well. Oh, yes. Oh, that's cool. Ooh. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> <laughs> is that important? Is that vital? Um, I yeah, do probably, have actually. five more, so if anyone is hurting a little bit more, they can also, because they'll lose potency in 24 hours, so mm-hmm. you can. Do I take one? Yeah. Okay. Did I get one? Yeah, everyone oh, got okay, a good berry. Cool. Mm-hmm. Then I won't put that ration. No. Um, Does anyone need a little bit more good berries? Um, yeah, I'm good. Fine. That's a good berry. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Everyone's good. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, if if the, if they're about to expire tomorrow or whatever, then we can mow them down when, for health. When would you say they would expire if I cast them like? I can only have one a day, though. Oh, you can only have one. Yeah, a day? You yeah, can you can only, only have one a, one a day. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, so basically, like, I guess if it's like a twenty-four strict twenty-four hour, so we you can eat it again. Need a second one before it expired. Yeah, since they're magical food. Wait, really? Um, only one a day? I thought you could eat. They lose their uh, potency if they have not been consumed within 24 hours. It doesn't say that you can only eat one. Um, oh, it sustains you for a day if you eat it, but you can eat I think more it may be health. part of yeah. the homebrew, the like uh, darker the dungeons harder. rules. Oh, that's just like once a day okay. you can have like Cause, that. Because yeah, yeah, because the berry was like we doing went some over work. one. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a different adjustment. Yeah. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. that makes sense. All right. Um, at night, you can spend some hit dice to recover if you want. I'm okay. Mm. Yeah, and I'm spending it on the... the or um, to raise your magic portal. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll keep that quick and simple instead of doing a whole night camp thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm only down 3 HP. I'm wondering if I should don't raise the hit dice. No. That's fine. Yeah. I don't think you need to. All right. Um, Andrea offers that if Tangle is interested in knowing more about Sekra and the gods <laughs> and stuff like that, yes. she, she will happily... She then. I'm, yeah, I won't, I won't RP it, but like, yeah, like goes on. But like, well, you know, there's like spirits and like everywhere, and they they look after all of us. Sekra is just one that has, for me personally, done quite a lot. You know, because they're they're about helping out people who are really in in need and like healing and sort of goes into the basics of like what Sekra is all about. Oh, um, I listen attentively. Okay, oh cool. Yeah, well, it, maybe Sekra is looking out for me. One yeah, time yeah. I almost died in the desert. Well, actually, that's the sort of stuff that Sekra's like really is particularly looks. 
she yeah, she yeah. worries about the people who are really you know when they're really in trouble she will help you to make it through just so you oh, make man. sure you survive that's why I've, she's had a lot of resonance for me because I've had you know some hard times and I think that her looking after me and my family is part of why you know we made it through and maybe well maybe she's looking after our little group as well yeah I think so yeah this is like family Oh, yeah, I like that. yeah, we're all big, one, oh. one big family. You have this discussion too, as like your fire burns and you're like, you know, outside the ring of this campfire and your sleeping bags and stuff. The, there's a bit of a wind and it's dark and cold and the badlands kind of stretch on ahead of you and it's just, you know, it's isolating. And you're in the middle of nowhere and you're in the middle of the wilderness, but you feel that safety tonight. Mm. You know, Tango and I might be more family than we think. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> um, Josh, you can choose one person to gain inspiration, or as a table, you can choose who, who got the most out of this. Um, I'm inclined to give it to Tango because you're the one who like started yeah. this whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gain a point of inspiration because yeah. of uh, the inspiring speech here. Yeah, I, I uh, fill in a little page in my journal about Sekra, and I draw the like hand symbol and. Mm. Write down, like, you know, notes from what I learned. <clears throat> you put a not bird thing in your journal. It's like a character oh. defining thing. Yeah. I like Birds that. don't have like hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you look closely, the hands have, like, down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know, it's a step. <laughs> Baby step. Baby step. <laughs> it's a step. Um,. I yeah. had a question, but I totally forgot. It's okay. It, was, it just exited my mind. Oh, the good berries. Actually, uh, if we can't eat them for the rest of the time, can I just still hold them until the next night in case we need to get, like give them to people? Um, still potency? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. For others and strangers along the way? Mm-hmm. That makes sense for your character. Mm-hmm. Can we feed them to the moon folk? They're already long on the <laughs> This is nighttime now. I mean, if we, you know, should we meet like encounter in them again? Anymore? Yeah. Could a good knows? berry sustain something? <gasps> Feed one to your question. worm thing. Oh, well, yeah, I did already. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first thing that got me. Okay? Yeah, okay, yeah. fair. <laughs> They're Priority. best friends. Best friends. <laughs> All right. As you uh, wake up to adventure the next day, um, you finish the last leg of your journey. In the morning, you gain a thirst and hunger, and at noon, you gain, um, when you stop at noon, you gain a fatigue, so one of each. Um, And the sands kind of pick up, and the the wind picks up as you travel, too. Um, It gets a little harder to make steady progress. Um, But still, in the distance, as the sky turns from its like usually bright, like shining blue to like a more, I don't know, this, this, as these sands pick up, there's more covered and covered by, by storm and wind. Um, and rising out of like where the, you can barely see where the horizon hits the sky anymore because of the dust and everything, you see the great city of uh, Great Ashar um, on the horizon. Um, it truly lives up to its name. It is uh, quite large, and it stands like a large kind of block rising out. It's it's perfectly square. It's fen- it's, it's city walls, all made of a uh, a strong clay. Um, anyways, you make yourself towards it, and it just looks more and more uh, imposing, like this giant block rising out of this mess of sandstorm and everything like that. Um, and eventually you reach its gates by late afternoon. Um, it's got a few orc guards dressed in ceremonial garb outside. Um, they ask you who you are and you, you explain to them very briefly what you're doing here and they allow you to enter. And once you pass these gigantic like 50 foot stone or clay walls, inside the storm calms and you can still see it above you all but these giant clay walls are actually built to protect the insides of it from the wind and the storm and the sand um and it's almost like stepping into darkness uh these giant clay buildings kind of block out a lot of the natural sunlight and the the alleyways and streets are lit with torches and great braziers that are are burning hot and, and simmering in the afternoon heat um, as every nook and cranny, cranny kind of flickers and is covered in the shadow, even though it should be bright day ahead. And as you look above you too, these buildings rise and have like bridges and walkways on their second and third levels, mm. um, branching between them, almost like maze-like above the main thoroughfare. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're, you, the sites you see are, I don't know, several, like some orcs are, are look like city guards and are protecting the streets and marching like in, in special order throughout. Some look like they're just wandering in and out of buildings and, and there's merchants and taverns like usual, but everything's somber and a little quieter here. Um, and these orcs definitely outweigh all of you and they kind of, you are small in this kind of city of not giants but just like very large intimidating people that all look at you as outsiders and definitely see y you as very different and you can tell that visitors are very rare and you might be the only non-orc people in this city right now well tied is just like in awe of all of like the spectacle in the place and, yeah um, it's quite unlike something anything you've seen before and you've been, like of all the of all the cities it definitely is the most like it's a little alien for sure. It's a different experience. Um, ahead of you, uh, at the center of the city, down the main thoroughfare, are the stairs up to like the high temples of the of the city. Um, you can find that out by like asking any anyone, and they'll guide you to them. Where you know you'll be able to reach the Grand Diviner and ask her your questions and see if you can find some answers going forward. Mm -hmm. um, but as you enter the city and arrive there, that's where I kind of want to leave things and have them pick up yeah. next game. All right. Okay. A bit of a quiet, mm -hmm. ominous note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, Exciting. good job today, gang. Um, nothing too life-threatening. We had some fun in town. We had some fun on the way and some fun at our campfire. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Yeah. I don't know. Stuff. Should go around and do our little Cute, adorable stars and wishes things, things we like, things we want more of. Yeah. Stuff like that. Right, I know mine already. Go ahead then. Mm -hmm. We started um, with John last time, I think. Yeah, we did. Uh, I loved Andrew's prayer, like when she was <laughs> alone. Oh, yeah. That was oh, really thanks. good. Yeah. Shucks, guys. Yeah, that was a good scene. It was very, very nice. More RP in this hardcore game. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and it was great. It was, it was. This was a very exciting game. Like even, even beyond that too. Like I liked a lot of the stuff. Like I liked, you know, the personal adventures, like the Fight Club <laughs> thing, and like, oh my god, I love that you have that worm thing now, and that's just like part of your character now. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, everyone's everyone's yes. like really like forming up, like and solidifying in a really good way. Mm -hmm. So that's that's exciting to see. Yeah. I, uh... I really like that that long rest. Like, because usually, yeah. like, long rests are just like, we long rest, and that's like, nothing happens. Recover. You, you mm -hmm. just recover everything. You it's why I think, like, a week long long rest is like the best thing you can change yeah. about your D&D &D games at home because it's like, there's all these downtime rules and stuff for it, but like, there's, it's really, I don't know, sometimes when I run other campaigns, it's just like, go, 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 go. Like, no yeah. one wants to stop for a week and let their enemies do stuff. And it, you really don't have to by the rules unless you want to run a business or like sell a magic item. Mm -hmm. So this like forces long rest and it forces characters to think about like, oh, do I want to train a new language even or research a clue we found? Like I like that. It also gives you like the opportunity to like like RP, like get into like your character, mm -hmm. like to understand mm -hmm. like what does this person do like when they're not like adventuring? Like they're just like they're in the city for like a week. What are they doing? And I'm just fighting people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, yeah. The spirit um, of vengeance. Yeah. Uh, wishes. Um. I mean, I, just, I I really like the RP stuff that we're getting into. I oh. like love the the short mm -hmm. like our short rest that we took. Mm -hmm. Like where, you know, I'm like looking forward to getting to like know the other characters like more like mm -hmm. more of like their background and tangle's mom yes yeah. <laughs> oh, more of tangle's mom more yeah. tangle's mom is that everyone's wish uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, tangle's mom yeah has got it going on <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we already covered what I had in mind that I wanted to say. Like, I, I loved having the chance to see the characters individually and independent of, like, the larger party. Like, having the moment of, yes, Kanaima's Fight Club. Like, um, yeah. having uh, just, like, what, who are these people when they're, when they're on their own and when they're sort of left to their own devices? Um, and, yeah, I, I am very excited we have this Tangle's mom thread that we're going to be <laughs> exploring at some point. Yeah, I mean, like, my, my wish is almost, like, I we had so much stuff sort of, like, laid out, like, a little menu for us today. And I want to I want a buffet. Like, I want to do all of, like, a little bit of yeah. all of it. And I, I'm, I'm, like, worried that we won't have time to cover all of it. Um, 
And so I don't, I don't know how we'll how we'll resolve that. Like I want to do literally everything that you laid out for us, Julian. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I want to go to the Crystal Dark. I want to meet Tangle's mom. I want to go on a volcano adventure. I want to like I'm so stoked to see what's going to happen with these orcs. Um, mm-hmm. um, I'm curious about the old out. Like the whole thing. Yeah, and then there's an evil chaos cult too. Like I yeah. want yeah. I want all of it. Like thankfully the chaos cult. Mm. It sounds like will follow us wherever we go potentially. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I hope that we have time to fit it all in. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Same with like a lot of the points. Like, uh, I loved getting like into all of our like characters more. It was really nice to have like a RP heavy session. And um, I'm also in the same sort of camp of like, oh, there's so many cool things about this world. Like, I just want to like see more of the things and like follow all the little story threads. Um, I also love that uh, I'm just like allowed to keep this. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Co- like codal thing as a yeah. as, as a pet slash friend. Um, I guess I just need to figure out whether or not I should like try and give that a personality as well, or if that should I should leave that to you. Um, no, you can go for it. Yeah, I did not expect it to be a thing. Yeah, <laughs> well, I like I wasn't like intending it initially, but then I was like, oh yeah, well tied would definitely. Yeah, it makes so much really, sense. You know, like, like, yeah. Her matronly instincts just like boom. Yeah. Oh my god. This yeah. is my child. Yeah. 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 Like, um, yeah, so uh yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see like where things go and um Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully get get some more opportunities for uh Walt Tide to make some more friends. Yeah. yeah. And as always. And I'm excited <laughs> for like more of our characters to like mm-hmm. do like different like bonding things where yeah. we learn some more things about each other and like mm-hmm. I like seeing all the dynamics so like yeah yeah i got like my favorite thing is like definitely how you change each other like Mm -hmm. i i'm always uh like kind of my i my bone one of my several million bone to picks with dnd is that like it gives you a very like standard personality and it doesn't really give you any reward or incentive to change it or challenge it throughout the entire thing almost like it encourages you to play a bit of a stereotype but all of you are picking stereotypes and like of your own and, and challenging them against the other players and having them bump into them and be like, no, 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 how would my character adapt to this? What lesson do they need to learn? What is their, what like flaws are, do they have in their thinking that they need to open up about and like, how are they going to change and grow? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's very cool. Mm-hmm. Like that's like yeah. my mm-hmm. core of RPGs and um yeah, like I'm working on my own game design that's like all about character growth and it has like that as the core mechanics of it. And like I just would love this group to try that out when it's done, mm-hmm. maybe later this year or something, because I think you'd all like run with that like crazy. I've tested a little bit. It. It's super good. Uh-huh. And like even in a short session, you really get a feel for like what that game's trying to do. And Peace. yeah, I'm excited to try that. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. like you guys obviously know the kind of gaming I like. So it's all that. And it's wonderful. Um, but yeah, I'd like to do that more for this game. I'm loving what's happening. I am excited for you guys to keep venturing on. I do think we're going to get a chance to hit some of the main places we want to go to. Um, I am like keeping the pacing going as fast as I can in this game. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not making it, you know, weeks worth of travel to get anywhere. And yeah, I like we had last time as like kind of like a slow episode and then a build episode and a climax. I think we'll be able to do that again with these next couple episodes. Like we've had a slow episode where we get there. We'll have another episode where we're going to like build like crazy and maybe go through a few things pretty quickly. And it's all going to like reach a fever pitch and something mm-hmm. big's going to happen an episode after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm excited that we've we've set up too like mm-hmm. the fact that like Tangle does not want to go to the Crystal Dark at all. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. that'll yeah. be a fun thing to follow up on when we get there. It's yeah, like, like um, extra context on that. Like even in the Aarakocra like character creation page or whatever, mm-hmm. it's like very explicit that we despise being underground. It's like traumatizing. It's it's like it's like Oppa in the Last Airbender when he had to go to that cave. Yeah, yeah. Like they <laughs> hate it. Yeah. They feel confined and trapped and like. It, it miserable like it's it, it's very much like I was like I'm playing into that I was like he he hates this idea and he's gonna be a fucking brat about it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god 
I'm so yeah. excited for that to really yes. happen. I'm excited for us to go to the Crystal Dark now. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> no, I'm super excited We're for We're not it. visiting my mom either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. You have to pick one. <laughs> He's such yeah. a curmudgeon. Crystal dark, visit your mom. Yeah. Oh god. Crystal dark, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take the time crystal dark. Just like be like, I'm hurt. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck. Oh, I'm really I excited don't like for being it. uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy you guys think there's so many options too because like I'm I'm gonna be publishing the uh, campaign setting eventually and it's like not tons. Like I'm mm-hmm. worried it's too light because like I did all this with like a few like there's like I don't know, like four or five dungeons max that I have that are even roughly thought of and like a few outposts and towns and then just like, I don't know, a list of 20 rumors I, that I've been working off of and those 20 rumors, we still haven't gotten through all of them. You've mm-hmm. gotten like 10 of them and they're like giving so much freaking story. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm always, I'm, I'm like, do I even, am I able to give any more? Is it too much already? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I love the rumors, like, mm-hmm. aspects yeah, of this as yeah. well, yeah. Like, it's, like, cool just, like, getting those, like, little, like, story bits and then being, like, okay. Well, Even if they're not, like, this? super relevant, like, yeah. sometimes just, like, oh, this is, like, something cool you heard that adds the flavor and, like, it might come mm-hmm. up later. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the blind elf in passion yeah. stuff and, like... Yeah, I like that kind of stuff too. It's yeah. been fun to. I'm never gonna play a game without like a list of of campaign rumors and stuff to mm-hmm. spread around again. Yeah. That'll be the mm-hmm. first thing I always make. Yeah, I, I I love it. Like I feel like it does build the world for like yeah. for me like as a player. Like I feel like the world like is kind of like a little bit more real. Like it gives mm-hmm. it more context. It's a really good cool. way to not info dump. Just like you know, mm-hmm. disperse them slowly over time. Well, especially yeah. when we're like part of an adventurer's guild too, where yeah. there's like actively people are looking for these jobs yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like you have good reason to hear them and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cool. cool. I wonder what the rest of the like guild is doing. Oh you know yeah. I mean? well, like I kind of want someone to like eat it so we can like bring in more guild members. I know Josh is like, I want to play a vampire like crazy. Oh my god. god. Wait, is that actually, you don't have like a player. I didn't when I started, so vampires were not an option when we sat down for character creation. Yeah, and all of us immediately, like, as soon as you mentioned the word vampire during our character creation session, we all were like, tell us more about vampires. (laughs) They are officially playable now. Whoa. I have come up with the rules for a custom homebrew vampire race. Because these are very different. Someone die. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> no. Yes, um, they're definitely the hardest hard mode character. Like mm-hmm. you do have like a super sunlight sensitivity, mm-hmm. and you do have like a need to feed on like the blood of a, a creature once a day. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, they gave a few buffs too, and they're they're definitely not for the faint of heart. But I was like, you know what? They're part of the setting. I have uh, the rules for every other race of the setting laid out for homebrew races. I need to have those as well. Mm-hmm. So it's official. That's awesome. They're here. Nice. Nice. That's cool. Cool. All right. On that note, thanks for an awesome game. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope this was uh, awesome to watch. We had fun making it, as always. Um, if you uh, want to want to follow uh, Can We Play Already, you'll get notifications whenever they stream. They do a lot of awesome other games. They're doing Kids on Bikes right now, which is a Stranger Things uh, kind of uh flavored game that's really cool i've been producing that a little bit they're doing uh roll for damage on their channel which is an all women group it's awesome yeah there's some cool stuff going on this channel and uh check it all out including this show which will be back next week so stay tuned and uh as always like like subscribe on youtube come on get us those views Wait, will we be back next week yeah we will right yeah maybe not on wednesday but who knows okay. <laughs> join us next week maybe thanks for watching and we'll see you later Bye. Bye. Bye.